Okay, welcome to the session about uh, MDR, new regulation in European Union for software. Uh, starting with presenting myself, uh, my name is Peter Levendahl and I'm a consultant working mainly with uh, medical devices and laboratory equipment. Uh, my key area, of course, is, is uh, the MDR uh, regulation in Europe, and that's basically what I will talk about today. With a certain twist towards software. Reason being that software is quite important here is that uh, lots of software companies have lots of documentation needed already, meaning that if you are late out to get into new regulation, it's possible to use that as a good way to getting into uh, the regulation in Europe. Uh, Basically, with these kind of things, I work with uh, together with a company called Clever Compliance, and, and basically they provide the platform management system for standards and, and uh, also making sure that the compliance work is managed, can manage the supplier compliance through their uh, web-based platform, uh, and uh, also help out companies throughout the world to actually get the certification and need for for different uh, products also including medtech product. I typically help them with uh, doing things which uh, then uh, you can't handle it through them, their portal. I will help the customers and, and uh, make sure that you can work with these things and uh, connecting a dot between the software systems and, and, and the reality. And of course, uh, please out, check out on an, in the arena or on the web page, uh, clear compliance. Today we'll talk uh, mainly about uh, the medical uh, uh, device regulation, the new regulation coming out in uh, Europe. And, and it was actually issued all in 2017 and was supposed to go into force last year in May 2020. Uh, but then of course the pandemic with the coronavirus came across and, and therefore they delayed the implementation one year, even though it, it that told us basically blame the corona uh, epidemic, but, but it, in reality, I would say the authorities in Europe was not ready. Lots of, of the information was missing, guidance documents, uh, the platform to raise to the product, etc., and, and the actors was not even there. So, so I would say, even though without the COVID situation, it probably been pushed to another year. There are also discussions right now in, in some areas if they should push, push it another year. Uh, but uh, that's most likely will not happen since the authorities now have their things in in, uh, in place. Uh, for all in, in general, for all class one product, the new regulation is mandatory from twenty uh, sixth of May this year. Uh, but there are exceptions, and, and that means uh, a certain type of product and companies can meet this on the latest stage. Companies with existing uh, medical device direct uh, directive certificates from a notified body, they can actually sell the product until their medical device directive uh, certificate expires, but latest to 26, uh, 25th of May 2024. So, so basically they need to, to actually go over to new regulation for a while. Companies with class one products uh, that will be up classified, meaning that the new regulation classified from, from uh, class one up to higher classification, typical software, reusable uh, products, and, and uh, also some, uh, some other products which will be uh, used in nanoparticles. They will be basically be reclassified up to higher class, and therefore, in the correction cor two to the requirements, they actually said that, okay, then you can. Uh, continue to sell the products for a little bit longer. Uh, the main thing here is that you all of these things are on the conditions that you do not do significant changes on the product itself. If you do significant changes, you need to actually go into MDR at that stage. So you have to be careful if you are using any of these exemptions. So what are the difference then? Uh, in the risk classification, looks the same as in the past, but they have added uh, class one reusable, class one R, and that's basically meaning that a notified body now needs to go in and, and judge uh, if if you are 
product that can be reused and re-sterilized, then you need to ensure that there are not fair body involved. But as, as I said, that could also be in the court amendment too, that you can uh, delay that for a while. And basically, the more documentation uh, need is based on, on the risk classification, meaning that typical, if you have a higher risk product, the more documentation you need to have in place to do, uh, and, and then hence more work. And if you look into some areas with changes, and that's not all changes, but this is the key ones. And I would say the urgent things in the middle there, it's uh, right now, if you haven't checked your classification, will you be reclassified? It's important to look into what class will you be in. Find them and uh, get the notified bodies is uh, typically too late right now. It's a quite long lead time to get the notified body to do things, probably eight, nine months at least. Uh, but also if you are a distributor importer and if you are authorized agent or authorized uh, to actually represent the manufacturer, then you have to be careful because if you are placed in Europe and, and have any of these kind of functions in, uh, in the medical device field, there will be new requirements on you which didn't exist in the past. Uh, there are also new requirements on system and procedure packs. If you, pack them together, how you need to proceed on the reg regulatory side. The biggest thing now is actually on, on uh, all, uh, all uh, manufacturers regarding classification needs to have a quality system, meaning that today a class one manufacturer do not need a, a quality system. Meanwhile, in the future, they actually need to have uh, a quality system for all all different areas and of course this takes quite a long time to build another thing is that the labeling promotion have not really been in the regulation for medical devices before that's now actually added into regulation basically saying the same as in us for instance that, that you have to promote the product in accordance with the product labeling Another new role is that you need to have a designated person for retro compliance in the company. And this applies both for, for uh, in, in EU manufacturer, but also manufacturer placed outside EU and also for authorized representatives you need to have access to that one. And a new thing, which is also a little bit uh, odd in these things is that you need to have uh, a strategy for the retro compliance in the company. So you need to be able to show that you have a strategy for the retro compliance in the company which you could always think it uh, might be a little bit strange that you require that part in the quarter system. Quarter system in general is, is close to 1345 requirements. It's uh, not really spelled out directly, but, but in, in the uh, Article 10, Clause 9, you actually have uh, what you need to be able to show for all product classes. Something which also have been changed but are, are similar as before is, is uh, post-market surveillance and vigilance process, how you actually report things. The key thing to remember here is the reporting timeline, which have changed from 30 days for, for the most common reports to 15 days, meaning that it's, you need to be able to uh, file reports to authorities about, about safety issues much quicker. Uh, there are some changes in technical documentation, more in the format, and, and of course you need all to be also be able to show the classification uh, uh, documentation, etc., for how you documented your product. And, and also a new thing which comes out is the periodic safety update report for class one product. You need to do that twice uh, every second year. Meanwhile, if you have a not not fair body, you need to send it into not fair body once a year. So the key change and problems, I would say the biggest change for lowest class products, meaning that the, the biggest activities will be for the manufacturers which have class one product the lowest class. And the reason for that is mainly because you need to have a quality system. If you already have that, the same change applies to the other uh, different product classes, but basically for these kind of, of products, it's, it's a big hurdle in many cases. Uh, currently, quite difficult to find a notified body to take you on. Uh, so if you have, if you need a notified body, I have not found one so far. It actually will uh, can be quite challenging to get one, and it's quite long lead times to also get one. Uh, when you have one in in your hands, so I'd say you, you also need to work with it and, and actually get an audit on your way. 
And overall, I would say the biggest hit is on the startups, new companies, because if you had the Notify bot in the past, typical, they will, you are all the, the customers, so they will take care of you most of the time. Meanwhile, if you're a startup that needs a Notify bot right now, it's not that easy to find one. Even though there are a few which have, have some uh, uh, customers still uh, possible to take customers. Uh, so if your product, which class one product, which are either upgraded, then you still have a few a small chance to actually hit the deadline. Because uh, as I said, if you have a class one product that will be upgraded, you can still use the course and two possibilities to continue to sell the product for a while longer without uh, merging into MDR completely. But that means that you need to do lots of activities before 26th of May. And you need to ensure that you raise to the product as an MDD exception under the MDR before that date. Uh, and uh, regardless if you're upgraded or not, you need to make sure that you take the, action, the right actions. Do you have all the requirement doc, uh, required documents in place? Do you have a quality system? Uh, if you are a manufacturer outside EU, do you have an authorized representative assigned, uh, which actually meets the new requirements? Uh, and the big thing there is that the authorized representative today is more like a mailbox. You don't really, they don't really take any responsibility or need to do that much. But the new thing with authorized representative now is that uh, they will be as responsible as, as the manufacturer if something happens with the uh, product and the real manufacturer doesn't want to participate to help it out. So how, how do we typically work in, in uh, Clever Compliance uh, with these kind of activities? And, and of course, we help a lot of companies, first of all, meeting the MDR deadline to actually raise their for MDD to give them a little bit longer time to work with the quality systems and all the documentation, but also if you go on the MDR directly. So, so we typically have it in three different steps. The first step is more the gap uh, analysis, make sure that they do the right classification of the product, what are the requirements, and, and then set up a plan. And here we basically establish what needs to be worked on and what it is the time frame. The gap analysis is mainly to ensure that we go through existing documentation so we don't uh, need to redo anything that already exists. And typically in software, lots of things exist. Uh, most software developers are quite well good in, in actually uh, documenting what they're doing versus in hardware, it's typically a little bit harder. Uh, when I've done that, we come up with a play, plan and time frame and what is needed and then run the product. Uh, either the D or MDR or, or make sure that, of course, if, if you want to go to MDR later on, that we actually do the MDR documentation at the same time, so we don't need to do it twice. We follow a well-established process to secure the targets is met, of course. And, and uh, during this time, we make sure that we implement the quality procedures. We typically have a standard set of quality procedures, which are our state-of-the-art procedures. Meaning that we, when you actually have were done with the product documentation, we can show that we actually follow the quality procedures for the quality system. And the key for that is actually to ensure that uh, we have, uh, uh, that we basically have a track record that we can show that we actually have done uh, our implementation of the quality system. And required product documentation, of course, in step three is ready, quality system implemented. And then you can raise their address MDD to, to actually use the, uh, use the possibility to sell under MDD for a while more or MDR. And, and we guide you through the developed documents needed for the quality system process. And of course, if you, if you don't have a quality system today, you need to develop that and, and follow the ISO 1345. Uh, and, and that, of course, what we also help you with. Uh, it's important to have an easy to understand doc documentation system because if you don't have that, of course, uh, it will be difficult to follow. And, and if you can't follow, you easily come into non-compliance issues. Uh, and, and meets requirement for class one. And, and uh, typical when we work, we can of course help with higher classes, but typical the, the workload 
for class 2a product and above is much higher because the, the scrutiny of the documentation is higher and you really need to put in much more effort and that takes longer time. A typical lead time for us is about two months from start to, to finalize things. Uh, but if you're a higher class, you typically need much more time than that to, to be ensure that you are in, in uh, good shape. Uh, and of course, it's also important, especially if, if you're a startup company, that you can uh, change and adapt with future growth, meaning that you should be able to have a flexible system so you can actually grow the system and not need to redo it, because that's it quite important. So I think that was basically what, what, what I would like to cover in this uh, short session. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if there are any questions out there about you want to hear me more, more about. That was great. So if anyone from our audience who would like to ask uh, from our speaker, Mr. Peter, um, you may now type in those questions at the Q&A tab. It's found at the right side of your screen under conversations beside the polls. You can type in your questions under the, the Q&A. So later, if you would like to connect with our speaker, his email address is right there at the screen. You can also visit their booth at the arena. Just look for the booth for Hoff and Lovendahl. And I see there's no questions coming up yet. OK. I guess they were pretty satisfied. Uh, maybe do you have any other additional or final remarks, uh, Mr. Peter? I think it's it's uh, regardless what you want to do here, it, it's important to think about the different timelines. Uh, what kind of timelines can you meet and need to meet? And, and regardless, uh, the timeline itself, make sure that you have the documentation needed before you enter the marketplace. Because right now it will be much more scrutiny in different places. Perfect. So I guess there's no more questions coming from our audience. So thank you very much, Mr. Peter. Thank you very much, everyone. See you in the next session. Bye-bye.